preventing, reducing, and eliminating preschool suspensions, and also reducing the disproportionate number of preschoolers who are suspended and expelled from early childhood programs. What are the strategies? What can we do? The first strategy is being aware of your own bias. All of us are influenced by implicit bias. We bring into the classrooms with us our own behavioral expectations, our own biases around groups of people, whether it's racial biases, ability, attractiveness. We have biases that influence the decisions we make about children. We have to be aware of them. Remember, aware is halfway there. The second strategy is to really be aware of your hot buttons. Behavior is defined by the person who is most annoyed by it. There are some behaviors that really get under some people's skin, and there's other behaviors that don't bother some people. You have to be aware of the behaviors that really push your buttons, because when your buttons are pushed, it's really your problem. It's not the child's problem. Children push buttons. That's what they do. And when you expose them, they seem to push them even more. The key is how you respond to that. And how you respond to your buttons being pushed depends on how aware you are of your hot buttons. The next strategy is really knowing your children. You have to develop a personal, authentic, loving, caring relationship with each and every child in your classroom. And when you do that, you're aware of the behaviors that are triggered by certain events in the classroom. Speaking of the classroom, the next strategy is really setting up an environment for success. Setting up the physical environment. Do you have enough toys and equipment? Are children fighting over them? Do you have open pathways through your centers where children can walk through and upset the balance of the children working in that area? Are children walking through the block area, knocking over block structures? The other part of the environment is set up in the rules and the expectations. Do children really know what the rules are? Have you taught them the rules? What are the rules? Do you reinforce those rules throughout the day? Do you reinforce those rules consistently with each and every child? Then are you teaching pro-social skills? Do you teach children how to behave? Do you work with families and ask them what are your behavioral expectations of the child and incorporate that into your classroom? Do you teach children how to make friends? Do you teach children what to do when they become upset? Do you teach children how to manage those strong, intense emotions? Because if children don't know how to behave, then our job is to teach them, not punish them, not kick them out, not send them home for the day, but to teach them. However, we can't teach them during those critical hot points, not when they're most angry, because then they can't hear you. Can you imagine someone trying to teach you how to react when you're already upset? No, that won't work. It won't work for you, and it doesn't work for children. The next strategy is to know where to go for help. First, engage in training that will help you in managing challenging behaviors. Um, the Pyramid Model is an excellent training program. There are other programs that you can engage in to help you to know how to handle these behaviors before they come up. And also taking advantage of early childhood mental health consultation. If it's available in your state, find out. Have it as a resource. Post it somewhere. Post a number somewhere so that you know who to call so that you can gain the assistance that you need. Another strategy is really understanding your biases in terms of critical reflection. Every single day, every day, you should reflect on what took place during the day, how things went, the decisions you made, how you made them, what buttons were pushed, who pushed them, and why and then the action you took. And ask yourself, was that the best way to handle that issue? 
Why did this child in particular push my buttons? What came up for me and how can I handle it differently? By incorporating these strategies, first being aware of your own biases, then being aware of your hot buttons, setting up your physical classroom for success, teaching children the rules and expectations of your classroom, teaching them the pro-social skills that they need, reflecting on your own hot buttons, and engaging in critical reflection throughout the day. These strategies can help us to reduce and eliminate preschool suspensions. One of the things I want you to know is that children are going to be children. When they get upset, they're gonna kick, scream, bite, throw things, cuss. That's what they do. They've only been on the planet for a short period of time. Unfortunately, when adults get upset, they do the same things. They kick, scream, bite, hit. What is our excuse as adults? In order to manage the difficult behaviors of children, the key is to manage our own. So being aware of our biases and our hot buttons are the two most critical strategies that you can use. And you look at those things by engaging in critical reflection every day. I'm sure we can put an end to this. As Walter Gilliam said, suspensions is an adult behavior. We have the power to stop it. So let's do that.